Hi guys, it's Catherine. Today is the first video of three videos to come in honor of the release of Daniel L. Jensen's newest prequel book to one of my favorite trilogies, series, trilogy. But if you guys don't know, if you haven't been around here for a while, I absolutely love this trilogy. It's called The Malediction Trilogy, written by Daniel L. Jensen. The first book is Stolen Songbird, the second is Hidden Huntress, and the third is Warrior Witch. They're all just so good, I died. I just love these books so much, I talk about them a lot on my channel. And the prequel novel called The Broken Ones is coming out on June 6th, and in honor of that, I will be doing three videos up until the release. This first video will be six reasons why you should read Stolen Songbird because I highly recommend reading the trilogy before you read the prequel because it'll just make things a lot sweeter and more heartbreaking I guess and I feel like the story that happens in the prequel novel kind of is like an underlying subplot in this book in my opinion and it kind of also gives away like little spoilers about the characters in this book and there's not that much like world building in the prequel which I've seen people complain about so if you go and read the prequel and haven't read the main books then don't complain that you didn't get the world building because the first book is where you get but anyways today is gonna be six reasons why you should read Stolen Songbird tomorrow not tomorrow the day after tomorrow will be a playlist for Stolen Songbird I'm just doing everything with the first book I did not have enough time to prepare and do like for this book and for this book, you know, whatever. And then for the third video, I will be doing my The Broken Ones review. I have a written review for that and I will have it linked down below as well as like the Goodreads page for this first book and the author's like stuff. So check out the description to find all of the links. Let's just get started with six reasons why you should read Stolen Songbird by Daniel L. Jensen. So got my trusty journal. This is where I write all my film stuff. I had a little tiny journal before, but um, I ran out of space. So first off, if you haven't even heard of these books and you're just here because, um, I'll give a quick description of this book. I'm gonna try my best to do a good description because like I could, I just get carried away and I just know so much about all three books. You know, instead of trying to summarize it myself, I'm just gonna read the back. For five centuries, a witch's curse has bound the trolls to their city beneath the mountain. When Cecile de Troyes, that may not be how you say her name, but whatever, is kidnapped and taken beneath the mountain, she realizes that the trolls are relying on her to break the curse because there's a prophecy that if her and the Prince of Trollus, which is the place under the mountain, um, are united together, they will break the curse. Um, Cecile has only one thing on her mind, escape, but the trolls are clever, fast, and inhumanly strong. She will have to bide her time, but the more time she spends with the trolls, the more she understands their plight. There is a rebellion brewing, and she just might be the one the trolls were looking for. It's just so... Oh. Good. So this book is a YA fantasy romance, I think. Uh, I feel like the romance is a big part of this book, but I'll talk about that more in my six reasons why. So this is what this book is about. If you love fantasy and adventure and political intrigue and romance and fantasy and fantasy, this is the book for you. And magic, you know, that magic is in there. So here are the six reasons. Finally, we shall get into them. So the first reason why you should read it, and it was something that I was like, wow, this just made the book feel even cooler but it has like this french vibe going on like the names are like cecile and tristan and i said his name like tristian for like the whole time until i saw the like how to pronounce um the characters names and the end of the prequel book and i was like wow that's tristan not tristian tristan de montigny i was saying his last name um wrong as well until i listened to the audiobook one thing do not listen to the audiobook because it's just not uh -uh. I do not like the audiobook. I had read the whole trilogy and then I saw the audiobook and I was like, oh, let me listen to it. Mm -mm. I don't like how the narrator does the characters' voices. She just makes them sound like so stuck up and like rude. And I'm like, no, that's not how I pictured it in my head. But anyways, don't listen to the audiobook. And like Anais, I know I'm saying that one wrong, but I just, I can't say it the other way. <laughs> and King Thibault, I said Thibault, but apparently that's wrong. I'm just saying everything wrong, aren't I? Like, I'm just not French, okay? And you have like Zoe and Elise with the like thingies on the E's in both those names. And Victoria and Vincent, and I just love all those names. And a city in the world, which you don't see much of it in the first book, book but it is called Trianon. That sounded really French, I promise. Mm -mm. But it just has this like really cool overall French vibe and like the names of everything. And I just think it's just so cool and such a cool element to have to these books. Number two, and I think that I most loved about all these books, maybe, maybe not, probably the second thing I loved most about these books, but it is the political intrigue. There's just so much. And I feel like maybe the third book might've had the most political intrigue and like 
adventure and um, and like twists and turns but I say that but I had the most anxiety in this first book I was literally laying in my bed I was like stiff because I was like I need I can throw up in any second because this book is just gonna be giving me so much anxiety that I was just like oh my god like can it can it just work out please please that's just what I was saying the whole time do my dreams come true no there's just always so many factors going on in these books that I'm just like oh my god there's just always somebody like plotting and like twists and turns and I'm like please stop you're hurting my heart way too much and everybody's playing their own game and there's also this game in the book called I don't even know how you say it but I say Guerrero and that's probably really wrong but whatever <laughs> but it's basically supposed to be like this really complicated like political kind of game and that's basically the whole book is that game but in like reality form <laughs> but yeah I really love political intrigue but not so much that it's like so complicated like it's pretty easy to follow it in this these books so number three and this is probably my favorite thing because I, you know, I just need it in my life. But it is the romance in this book. So now, obviously, we have the main girl, Cecile. And obviously, the Prince of Trollus. Like I had said, they have to work together to break the curse. And obviously, they have to be together. So in the beginning of the book, when she's kidnapped, she is married off to the prince to see, like, oh, is this going to work? Is this going to break the curse? Surprise, it doesn't. That's not, like, a spoiler or anything. Because, like, what else would the whole rest of the book be about if they did break the curse? And when they are married, there is this bond that comes between them where they can, like, hear each other's thoughts and it's really cool and I really love that scene where she's like oh my god I'm not in my own head anymore and I was like yes oh my god thank god but obviously they form a relationship over the book and I'm just like you're killing me every single second and I can't take it and there's also a really sad love story in this book which is what the prequel novel is all based on but it's kind of better to like find out what the story about it is in this first book because then it's just like oh my god my heart why do you have to do this and then you get to like see it all in detail in the prequel book and also over the books you find your villain so when you come back to read the prequel novel you're like oh my god even worse than I knew you were but at the same time I knew you were really bad hmm so yeah back to the romance Cecile and Tristan's romance was just so oh my god I'm just like can you guys get a break to just be with each other like it's a pretty good slow burn romance I read better but I mean like I still love the romance in this and the way it did it oh crap that annoying little dot is there isn't it I'm so sorry if you've read these books and you've gotten to the last book the ending of the I just I can't okay I'm not gonna talk about it I was just so like What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I was so affected by the ending of the last book that I just like, if I think about it too much, like I'll probably start crying. So let's just move on. Stop thinking about it, stop thinking about it. Mm, move on, move on. So number four is the amount of story that you get in one book. So, so the first book is probably the like biggest of all of them and then the last book is the smallest. Why would you do that to me? So, but like sometimes when I'm thinking about the books, I like, okay, wow, I'm thinking about the ending of the last book and I'm just, my heart's really hurting right now. <laughs> Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> As I was saying. Sometimes I'll like be thinking about like different scenes in the like the trilogy and I'm like, wait, that was all in the first book? Like what the heck? There's just so many things, so many different things that happen. And I'm just like, wow, you're just moving so fast. And I'm just like, oh my God, you're killing me. And like each book is kind of like, you can like separate the books. Like, whereas in like other books, like Vampire Academy, first one I thought of, like they all just like kind of like melded together and I can't remember book from book. But like when you think about it, you're like, wow, geez, all of that happened in this one book. And it's all just so well paced, which leads me into number five. But I have to change my battery because it's dying. <laughs> but number five is pacing. And I feel like the pacing of this book was just so well done and it was always moving and I was never bored so like in any book like even if the pace is moving slow like I won't notice or care that it's slow if I'm interested in what's happening if it's like holding my attention so like in this first book there was nothing that I was like oh my god move on you know I was just always really interested in what was happening I loved like learning about the world and of course you don't get the full world out of the first book but because like it's not really that important and it's more for like the next books and move and stuff but the pace is always just moving very fast which it should be because this is polar political entry and there are always gonna be like different things happening different things changing and then like twists and turns and like <laughs> I can't deal with it and okay even at one point like towards the end I was like I nearly tore the book in half because I had so much anxiety I don't even know and now we've gone back into number two but we're at pace so <laughs> so yeah I just really enjoyed the pace of these books so number six I couldn't really come up with a number six other than just like because I love this book so much If you know me, you know, I read a lot of fantasy and I always look for like 
I don't, okay, I don't actively look for obscure books that I, like, that are not popular books, but I much more enjoy reading them rather than hype, overhyped books. These are so good, and if you love fantasy and, like, all things magical, this is just the book for you, you know? The sixth reason you should read it is just because I love it. <laughs> and because I love things so fiercely <laughs> that you should read it. That's why you should read it. I don't even know. I feel like all these books had great characters and great a great story and plots and twists and turns and political intrigue. Like again, that's like something that I really, really enjoyed about these books. And great romance as well. But even though it like tore my heart apart and I... Also, another thing that I just remembered. But um, I cried so much in this first book and so much in this third book. And even after this third book, and like I was talking about, let's not think about it. And I was really, really pleased with this middle book because it didn't have middle book syndrome where I was like, oh my god, like, you know, middle book syndrome. Like, like every trilogy has that. But I feel like this one didn't so much and I really enjoyed reading about it and learning about it. And I was just like, mm -hmm. I was a little bit het. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna tell you why I was hesitant about like reading it and like why I was like, eh, but I can't tell you or else that'd be a spoiler, so. <laughs> but yeah, this trilogy is probably my most highly recommended of all fantasy, YA fantasy. I mean, I mean that also goes for saying that my most highly recommended of all the books that I read because I only really read fantasy. So, yeah. So, yeah. And that concludes this video. I hope it made sense. I just love these books so much that I just like felt like I just rambled the whole time. And I probably didn't make the points that I wanted to. Part 300, that's what I do in every single video of mine. I don't make the points that I mean to, but what can you do? But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all pick up this book if you're interested. Remember, the prequel novel comes out on June 6th in the North America and June 1st, I think it is, in the UK, which is really exciting you guys are reading it before me or get the book before me. I've already, I have the copy that I read on my Kindle, but I'm so excited to get the physical form so I can take more bookstagram pictures with it. Like I've just had to use like an iPad and like pull up the book cover on that so that I can take pictures of it with it. I just love it so much. So like I said before, I will have all of the author stuff linked down below as well as the book's good read page so that you can go check it out. But anyways, I'm just gonna stop here before I like keep on rambling. Remember to come back day after tomorrow when I upload my playlist. I've been working on it all yesterday and I did like Cecile's bonding tattoo on my hand and there was glitters everywhere after that. I just, <laughs> but it's been really fun and probably won't be fun to film my review video because that'll be so long. I cannot say enough how much I love these books. So let us just end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to check out my social media, which will be linked down below if you'd like to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. Wow, I totally missed the um, lens. Goodbye. <laughs> I was yours on Sunday. While we watch the children play We fell deep and love again Like we always do